This is part two of acids, basis three. Um, we're going to start looking at titration. So this thing right here, this is a picture of a titration. What is this? A titration is a volumetric analysis. This is a way to get a, a measurement. And how this is performed is you are going to have a burette, and it's going to look like... Um, like a graduated cylinder that has a stopcock on the bottom that you can open and close to let out a certain amount of liquid and you can measure it. So during a titration, you add a, a specific measured amount of volume and you know how much of a known concentration what solution in the pipette, in the, in the, sorry, the burette. And you're going to add that into an unknown concentration in a volumetric flask. So if I'm trying to see if it's maybe basic, I would put in a known acid into this and throw in like say phenolphthalein because it'll change, say it's nice and pink like that, like you see right here, it's nice and pink. I'm gonna add acid to it to see when it changes, to see, how um how basic it is and this is going to give me my equivalency point the point at which it switches where i have enough moles to, of acid to equal the moles of base to neutralize it you're looking to neutralize it <clears throat> so again an indicator what we've already used it marks the completion of the neutralization with a color change and this is going to be an end point. You want to get it right, right as it switches. You don't want to like leave it open. Oh, there's a change and close it. And it's about this much. No, you want it right when it does it. Okay. And this is an Erlenmeyer flask containing an unknown indicator. So what is this equivalency point? Again, where moles of, moles of acid equal moles of base. And we're going to start looking at molarity again. So, my molarity of acid equals mol, uh, the volume of acid, where your molarity of base equals volume of base. M1V1 equals M2V2, only with acid bases. <clears throat> so, A refers to the concentration of H+. Plus. How many H pluses are there? And MB is how many OHs is there? All right, let's look at the exercise. Look, little dude, we're going to the yellow pages. So what is the volume of 0.1 moles molarity of NaOH needed to neutralize 25 milliliters of 0.2 HCl, moles of HCl? So I only have one of these, so I can use these numbers good. One of these, use this. So it's 25 times 0.2 or 0.2 times 25 equals a 0.1 molar. All right, when I calculate this out, which in a way I don't really have to, because look at this. There's 0 0.2 and 0 0.1. This is half of this. So as one goes down, the other one goes up. This is half of this. I'm going to need twice as much of this to neutralize that out. 50 ml. You can do the math part of it, but it's kind of easy just to look at it and do it mentally. Again, since the base is half as strong, it will require twice as much. All right, let's look at this next one. I've got 0.1 CaOH2 will be needed to neutralize 30 mils of 0.1 molar HCl. Again, MAVA equals MVBB. B, v, B. Okay, so I can start out with my acid, nice and fine. 30 mLs of 0.1 molar because there's only one of these. But I've got two OHs. So what do I got to do? I got to multiply that by two. So I get a 0.2 molar OH. When I plug this in, I get one times a 0.03 liter gives me 0.2 V. All right, well, if this is half as much as this, I'm probably going to need 0.15 or 15 milliliters, half as much to neutralize it out. All right, this last one. 
strontium hydroxide used to neutralize 50 ml of 0.25 phosphoric acid. What is the volume of the base need? What do I need to do? I need to take it out of the word formation and get it into its symbols. When I do that, strontium hydroxide, there is two, plus two, minus one, there's two of them. So I have two hydro, um, hydroxides. So times it by two, I've got one molar hydroxide. All right, phosphoric acid. There are three hydrogens. So three times 25 is 0.75. So I can plug these in instead. <clears throat> when I do this, I've got the 0.75 times 50 equals 1V. When I calculate it all out with my calculator, because I need it this time, it's 37.5 milliliters. All right, so we've got these titration curves. Just know that we're going to look for the where it's in the middle of everything. So if I've got there and there, it's going to be in the middle right here. Equivalency. It's roughly seven. Let's look at the equivalency here. I'm going to look for in between. I'm going to say it's probably about nine. So bromothymol, I can use that blue. I can use lemon paper. Strong base added to a weak acid. Use phenolphthalein and thymol blue. All right, this next one is probably going to be roughly about four, three and a half, four equivalent, equivalency. It's a weak base, strong acid, bromo crystal green. And in this one, about halfway, it's like strong base, strong acid, it's neutral. Okay, so now we're going to look into buffers. What the heck is a buffer? We've got titrations, now we've got buffers. So you would need a buffer solution to dip the um, the, uh, the the probes, the pH probes, just to neutralize it out in between every time you put it into the acid basis because you don't want to contaminate. What are buffers? So buffers are a system made that um, <clears throat> has just about equilibrium going on. Takes it, makes it hard to switch between the two. Their uh, aqueous solutions encountered in nature contain many solutes. Often sim simultaneously equilibria occur in solution. These equilibria may contain common ions. Buffer systems are examples of common ion systems. So, solutions that resist change in their pH levels when H plus and, or OH are added are called buffers. They're typically created by mixing weak acids or weak bases with a related salt. So for instance, <clears throat> I'm going to use fluorine, hydrofluoric acid and sodium fluoride. I've got a weak acid basic salt. It will resist change. I would add a basic salt as my buffer. Um, Buffers resist change in pH because they contain both acidic species to neutralize OH and basic species to neutralize hydrogen, okay? So just know that's what the buffer is. We're going to look through it real quick. Don't worry too much on buffers. Just know it's usually uh, neutralizes stuff out. It makes it really, like it doesn't, its pH doesn't level, doesn't change too much. So if I have HONO2, and add KNO2 to it. It doesn't change too much, it goes to a 3-3, okay? Two important characteristics. It's determined by the acid choses, chosen in the buffer capacity. How much H plus or OH can be added without a significant change. It's also determined by the concentration of the acids in, um, acid or basic salt. Buffer capacity is the amount of acid or base of a buffer that can neutralize before the pH begins to change. You don't want it changing too much. It's dependent on, upon the amount of acid base from which the buffer is made. Okay? Versus pH. So comparing. One mole of C HC uh, acetic acid and sodium acetate buffer to a uh, um, one molar acetic acid, one molar acid, um, acetate buffer, sodium acetate. 
the acid and the concentration ratios are the same. The pH would be the same. The first system is more concentrated, one to one, as a greater buffering capacity is more resistant to change. The higher the molarity, the better the, the resistance. Okay, so what does this have to do with anything? All right, so we already saw in the uh, previous notes that blood normally has a pH of uh, 0.735 to 0.745. It's slightly basic. So outside this range, it disrupts, if we get more acidic or more basic, it disrupts the cell membrane stability, protein structure, and enzyme activity. So alkalosis, um, this is when it goes too basic. And acidos, acidosis is below, it becomes too acidic. The more con this is more common because our metabolism generates acid, so it usually goes acidosis instead of alkalidosis. So a pH below 6.8 or above 7.8, death. So buffer systems for blood, carbonic acid and bio, bicarbonate ion base buffer. So we use this. So a pH of carbonic acid is used normally about 6.1, but blood has a, um, a ratio of 20, raising the pH to 7.4. Because the level of the base is much higher, blood has a higher capacity for neutralizing acids. So when we look at juice, organs that regulate our pH are our lungs and our kidneys. That's why we don't want our kidneys to fail, because it regulates the blood, how acid and how basic our blood is. It filters it. Kidneys absorb and release the hydrogens, um, and the uh, hydrocarbonate um, ions. Excess acid leaves the body in urine, which normally has a pH of like a 5 to a 7. So it's kind of acidic, basic to acidic. So we also exhale through our lungs CO2, which shifts the equilibrium to the right to consume that hydrogen. So if we if we release this, I can't get, I can't find it. If we release this, it's going to shift here to make up for that loss, and it reduces this. Okay. Hemoglobin binds both oxygen and hydrogen. So HBH, the hemoglobin, and the hydrogen and oxygen gives you hemoglobin oxide and H plus, acidic. During exercise, that's when lactic acid is produced. That's when the H plus is increased. So if you hold out your arms with a book in it, it could be a light book, and just hold it and hold it, hold it, hold it. Your arms are gonna start to hurt. That's that lactic acid building up because you have all that oxygen coming in and not getting replaced, right? So it shifts the equilibrium to the left. Um, where is it? This side. The H plus binds the hemoglobin and the O2 is released into the tissues. All right. So try and work on the uh, hydrolysis and tritation. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Besides that, I hope you guys have a great day.